Trick or treat, smell my feet. This is my cold open greet. Slam synopsis. We all grew up looking forward to October 31st with a thirst for starburst and fake beards, dressing up weird and kooky on the spooky holiday, never asking why. Well, today you and I are going back in time with my rhymes to find out where it all started. We go back 2,000 years to, I guess, the year 16, when the King Celtics were ticked off by the winter. Whether they would weather the winter and end up winners all started on their new year of November 1. Their summer was done and they braced for the frost and, kind of like today's Celtics up in Boston, their crops would die, darkness would take over the sky, and ghosts would cry out on October 31st as a day when our world and the spirit world nearly fused, so the Celts used this as a day to celebrate Samhain. Don't have a cow, and I know it's designed to spell Sam Hyen, but it's Samhain. So druids or Celtic priests were shoo-ins to mentally feast with the spirits during sound to learn what comes after now in the future, but they weren't cheap moochers. They set up sacred bonfires so people could offer up their crops, fruits, and animals, which all put together equals a danimals, and these highly flammable damnable gifts were enough to maintain the rift to control, even though those druids could have just got a critical role. So the Celts were fine with this festival they arranged, but then everything changed when the Roman nation attacked. Backed by a big army, the Celts hardly lasted until around 43 AD when Samhain was intertwined because the Romans combined for Alia and Pomona. It's a similar persona. They had a holiday in October for Alia dead, while Pomona was a goddess protecting fruits, trees, and gardens. I hope she protects better than Hardin. Her symbol was an apple, and here's a Snapple fact. Bobbing for apples, some believe that's where we got that act. In 609 AD, on May 13th, Pope Boniface IV brought forth All Martyrs Day, but that's just for starters. Okay, later, Pope Gregory III said, Ay, 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 let's combine those who have died for us with those who in a good light paint us on All Saints Day on November 1st. That took guts. This is all taking place around 730 AD, nuts. Ha! <laughs> Got <he. laughs> That's three videos in a row. So, in the 9th century, aka the thousands, Christianity was allowed in more Celtic houses, and the church created All Souls Day on November 2nd as a day to honor their dead. It also had costumes and fires, and some claim the church conspired to get rid of Celtic traditions to establish positions, so they beckoned to make November 2nd the new Samhain. So what? I'll tell you what. Everyone was fine with the whole human spirit world thing, willing to cheer it until I laugh, because after the conversion, some preferred the second version, but a higher power had an aversion to the show in its usual place, so they disgraced us all by wanting to cancel because they couldn't handle a celebration of multiple nations that didn't gel with their original creation. Do you get it? Because they got screwed. Before we cross the seas and feel the East Coast breeze, we gotta play the name game. All Saints Day was called All Hollows or All Hollow Must. No relation to Christmas, but there is a relation to Middle English with this ish. All hollow miss, all hollow mess say it means All Saints Day are a Hawaiian ukulele player, so take it from this conveyor. All Hollows Eve became Halloween. The Northern Protestants weren't feeling the whole demon holiday. I deem that's crazy. New Englanders always revel in their devil. It spread by word of mouth down south, where native Indians and Europeans were seen eye to eye on their different beliefs to create a common motif of an autumn festival. Let's go! They put on a public play party to celebrate the harvest, telling stories of those who have passed and had mass dancing and singing. You would raise your chin to learn your fortune. What's with that baloney? Who are they, Madame Zaroni? There were some tricks, but for now they vanished. It's to say their mischief was mostly managed. In the 19th century, most of these parties were for autumn, while overseas some Irish hit rock bottom because of the potato famine, so they crammed into boats in 1846 but didn't nix their customs. Custom costumes were custom and children would ask for food and money at houses around town. Sounds like the ideal millennial trick-or-treat now. Women would divine their husbands' names using yarn, apples, or mirrors. And if that seems silly or you're still on the fence, remember, there was no internet. Or common sense. In the late 18s, it would seem, the goal was to make Halloween more about the community and less about pranks and witchcraft. Witchcraft's bad deeds that could put you in a penitentiary. On to the turn of the century, where parties were all the rage with fun games, costumes, and food. Parents should, according to newspapers, taper all images that are too frightening or grotesque and remove the religious aspect to make the holiday more secular. Damn liberal media. 1920s to 30s, the holiday was secular, but sucks to be your lawn, which could get destroyed by dawn, or perhaps they trashed a passing parade, but that faded away in the 50s when they aimed to cater to the youth to give it a younger flavor. The baby boomers were too large to celebrate townwide, so they tried to keep it in the classroom or residence. They were not hesitant to go around asking for sweet treats to eat, and that completes our history lesson, but I'm guessing you want to learn more? No, God! No, God, please, no! 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 Okay. 
We get trick-or-treating from all those All Souls Day parades where the poor would beg and families said, get off my leg, just take these soul cakes and make a prayer for our dead relatives. The church made that relevant and said, do that, because the old way they reserved judgment, you put out food and wine for spirits, which is not redundant. The practice was called going a souling and rolling, and money and candy are these kids who use this to get goods. It's a pretty neat feat. Parents would offer a treat to avoid a trick, like getting eggs thrown at your brick. Now I'll fess up about dress up. Some people were afraid of the dark, but they didn't want to just park it in their home, so they roamed outside wearing masks and costumes while spirits loomed, hoping they wouldn't recognize what's also wise. They would put out food for phantasms. No sarcasm. Who would do that with enthusiasm? Black cats are bad luck because they used to be witches, while girls wanted to learn their fortune because they're dumb stupid. Do I have anything? Do I have anything? Damn it. No. Alright. Gotta say it. Bitches. Yeah, you're right. No, no, you're right. You're right. Yeah, no. Sorry. You blaze it up on 420, but light it up on 1031. You don't know Jack about the pattern that is jack-o'-lanterns. So Stingy Jack tricked the devil. All right, I'll pick someone different. Better? So Stingy Jack tricked the devil twice by making him turn himself into a coin and climb a tree, and the devil fell for these deceptions on the perception that Jack's reception was honest. So Jack would free him on the exception that the devil had to leave him alone and not take him when he met his maker, except Jack's maker was like any other takers. God wasn't a faker. He didn't want Jack, but the devil couldn't crack on his agreement, so he sent dead Jack off into the darkness with a piece of coal, had him burn it, and dead Jack put it in a turnip. The Irish and Scottish would carve out turnips and potatoes, and when we borrowed the merriment, Americans jumped in using a pumpkin to scare spirits away. Halloween is constantly changing, but you don't have to conform. You can just sit at home and watch 13 Nights on Freeform. This is Halloween. Notice the focus. Our new priority is rewatching Hocus Pocus. Thanks to Hollywood, Halloween is no longer about ghosts and skeletons. There are new elements like killers from thrillers or heroes from comics. It's all economics, and it's so sick to be slash do something different. Go visit a haunted house to live out your fears, but those creepy clowns better stay the f*** away from here. Go trick-or-treating to choke on razor blades or join the departures of marchers and parades. Will that make you a snorer? Go dress up for Rocky Horror or get cocky with your costumes because some people take their look seriously, albeit some deliriously. It won't be like Comic-Con where there are a thousand wins, but it will be like Comic-Con because you'll see a thousand Harley Quinns. And it will always perplex me why some costumes are sexy. Don't hex me. If you think you look fine, who am I to whine? Maybe you think your look is fun or you want to be hit on like a bowl that says take one. It's great if you like how people are mucho hombre. It's just, do we need a sexy Ken Bone and Harambe? Halloween means something different to everyone, but whatever the reason, we can all agree, it is not the Christmas season! Hey guys, how you doing? So we're like on video six, and you gotta subscribe. Just a little red box, hook up your Gmail. We're all on Gmail. Just hook it up to YouTube, and you know, subscribe to the channel. You get a new slam video every week. We're having a lot of fun, as you can see. And I'll slam anything. Books, movies, you know. Lesson plan in school you're having trouble with? Sure, I'll do it. As long as I can have fun, you got it. So, thanks for watching. And, uh, happy Halloween. What the? That's a razor blade! Why is there a razor blade in the candy corn? That's supposed to be a myth!